Once again, we welcome you all, the English congregation, for this English worship service. We thank God and we praise God for His faithfulness towards your life. At this moment, we read a scripture portion and begin the service with prayer. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the, God, the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. Shall we all look to the Lord in prayer? Eternal God, loving and living Heavenly Father, Lord, once again we thank You and we praise You for who You are and what You are. Lord, thank You for being our Father. Thank You for being our Shepherd. Thank You for being our Creator. At this moment, the Lord, we humble ourselves. And Lord, we want Your preeminence in this service. Lord, bless those who are watching this program. Lord, I pray that, Master, You would visit those houses. And Lord, I pray that, Master, You would bless them with Thy double portion of blessing. Lord, at this moment, we want You to bless each and every aspect of this service. Lord, once again, we commit ourselves into Your care, into Your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. At this moment, our English choir will lead us in singing. constantly remembering us in your prayers and also uh, helping us financially and uh, uh, through your prayers even and for this uh, Sunday meditation uh, please turn to book of Acts book of Acts chapter 17 book of Acts chapter 17 uh, I'll just read one verse and uh, we'll move forward chapter 17 verse 16 book of Acts chapter 17 verse 16 now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him, 
and uh, when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry i just read once again now while paul waited for them at, uh, at athens his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry shall we pray our gracious god most loving heavenly father lord thank you for the blessed opportunity once again given this day to meditate and reflect upon your word lord lord it is your word that really comforts encourages us and builds us up uh, into the stature and the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ lord please be with us as we meditate this word and uh, if there are any distractions that will lead us to distraction lord please uh, help us uh, to avoid every distraction that we are facing and help us to concentrate on what we are hearing today lord lord as we uh, as we and also all the all the church of god is worshiping you on this sunday lord lord please be with each and every church each and every member and uh, build them up and encourage them uh, in such a time as, as this lord as a submit especially our members into your mighty care i pray and ask all these things in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen uh, once again uh, it's a great privilege that god has given to every one of us uh, as to meditate his word and to learn from him uh, learn from him and uh, as we look into the book of acts uh, book of acts is one book uh, most of the people comment uh, in such a way and uh, every book every book in the bible is closed and uh, the acts that are happening are uh, uh, even when you look into the uh, gospels even if you look into the gospels also uh, when you look into the, each of the gospel every gospel is closed and every gospel is finished here but uh, most of the people say only book that is, that, uh, is continuing even till today is the book of acts because it is acts of the apostles of the lord Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and uh, when you understand the intent and meaning of uh, of the Book of Acts, you also understand the uh, work of the early church and the uh, and the uh, and the struggle that they have gone through uh, to extend the gospel of our uh, kingdom even into the ends of the earth. And uh, one uh, one one great commission that God has given to every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ is to go and preach the gospel uh, to ends of the world. And uh, Uh, this is not uh, this is not a special calling or uh, to some sorted people or this is not a special calling or uh, to some uh, some people with some abilities but this is a general call this is a general call general call to every believer in the lord jesus christ to go out to go out and preach the gospel uh, to every believer or every creature on this earth and uh, uh, even though we are uh, we are pastors or even though we are a church church elders church members or people who are working in secular fields and uh, this this commandment is not is not void of us because wherever we are wherever we are placed placed uh, in the mighty hand of god definitely god wants us to wants us to share the gospel of lord jesus christ or uh, to some some people outside the church or some people outside of family and uh, uh, th- uh, that is the greatest calling that god has given and uh, the most important uh, and john macarthur as he uh, as he is uh, writing in the book of uh, preaching he says that preaching god's word preaching god's word is the most noble and glorious glorious works that god has assigned assigned to any man uh, in this world and one of the glorious works that god has given to you and me is to preach the gospel of the lord uh, gospel of the kingdom or uh, even to the ends of this world because apart from this and uh, there is no other purpose uh, purpose when you when you understand in in the light of preaching the gospel so uh, as you are lightened and as we are lightened uh, lightened to the ways of god lightened to the uh, uh, whatever about things that god has want, wanted to do in our life definitely we need to carry that torch to the other people so that they may be also lighted and they may be uh, they may be turned from their ways to the true way our lord and savior jesus christ and uh, as we are living in different situation uh, uh, today and uh, the world is have world have gone through uh, so many difficult changes so many drastic changes today and uh, even in this time also the gospel of lord and savior jesus christ has not changed the times have changed situations have changed and the approach to the bible has changed and everything everything any anything may change in this world anything may change in this world but the word of god never changes and the commission that god has given to the church is not void now it is not uh, it is uh, uh, it is not impaired by the situation that are uh, that are Uh, happening in this world today and it is in this time 
in the it is in this time that the world needs more of the gospel and uh, and we are the custodians of the gospel and we need to take the gospel to the ends of this world and uh, when you look into the book of acts and there are there are plenty of examples how people have suffered for the gospel's sake and how people have carried down the carried down the thoughts that that Christ have handed over to the apostles there and that thoughts is with us today and we and you and i need to carry the thoughts even to the ends of this world and uh, as 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 they are uh, moving moving forward in carrying the carrying the thoughts to different places and we come to a point where paul comes to athens paul comes to athens there and uh, for my uh, uh, for today and my uh, uh, so my topic is motivation for evangelism motivation of for spreading the gospel or motivation for evangelism and uh, when you try to understand the present situations in our country and in the world and uh, most of the time we uh, we might be perplexed and how how we need to uh, really uh, take care or uh, take the gospel to the outside of this world because outside of a country or in the country or wherever we are because situations are completely different and uh, there is no scope for us to go out there is no scope for us to reach some people there but the gospel the lord jesus christ is a mo- he is the need of the heart today and it is a need of the heart and the situation is completely different and what we need to do and what we need to take strength from and uh, we need to take strength from the word of god definitely and how these people have have shared the gospel even though the situations are completely against them even though even though nothing is supporting them and these people have not or have not given up on preaching the gospel of our lord and savior jesus christ and when you turn to uh, uh, acts chapter 17 verse 16 verse 16 and uh, paul as he is uh, and we we see the heart of paul here now while paul waited for them and waited for his companions in athens his spirit was still in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry wholly given to idolatry and we live in a country where where idolism or idolatry is very rampant in this country rampant in this country and uh, you and you and I need to understand understand and you really need to know the importance of preaching gospel in this country preaching gospel in your place preaching gospel in the situation that you're living in and preaching gospel to to your friends and uh, if that gospel is not really handed over to such such people outside there definitely we are missing we are missing at the point of our lives point of our lives we see paul we see paul once he was completely against the gospel of our lord and savior jesus christ and he is against against the growth of the church he wanted to kill the people of the church he wanted to uh, he wanted to stop the spread of the gospel in jerusalem and uh, and, and in the samaria and judean regions but this person a person who once stopped a person who was once a hindrance a person who was once a stumbling block to the gospel now he has become the propagator of the gospel and the utmost propagator of the gospel because and this person has done more than any any of the people uh, any uh, any apostle of the lord jesus christ even also have done in their lifetime because this person is going to so many places going to a place he ended up in a place called athens and one of the civilized cities in the world athens civilized civilized places in the world at that time there is uh, there is so much so much of philosophy there there is so much of study or so much of uh, knowledge there knowledge there but this person paul is going to that place and when he sees the situation in that city there is everywhere idols idols everywhere and uh, uh, when you understand uh, when you go to go the down verses also when you understand uh, in, in verse 18 then philosophers of the epicure uh, sorry one verse 17 therefore disputed he in the synagogues with the jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him and in verse 23 in verse 23 very important we see that for i was passed by for uh, for as i passed by and behold your devotions i found an altar with this inscription to the unknown god whom therefore he ignorantly worship him declare i unto you and as as apostle paul is uh, is moving through the city of athens moving through the city of athens he came to a point uh, where he saw some altar built and there is an inscription on that altar saying to unknown god to an unknown god to an unknown god and what motivates us to preach the gospel today 
And what should motivate us to preach the gospel today? And the first motivation that we can take is man's thirst for God. Man's thirst for God. And when you see uh, in the city of Athens and how, how there are idols rampant in the city and how there are uh, altars built up to unknown God, unknown God. And people, they do not know whom they are worshipping. People, they, they are not, they do not know. They are ignorant of the person, of the fact, of the true and the living God. Yet, they chose to worship. Yet, they chose to build an altar there. Yet, they chose to build an altar there. And only, and uh, only, only the light of the gospel can really open the darkness. And uh, they really can uh, shed out or thirst out the God. Uh, the darkness that is in the city and that is the reason this person of Paul goes to the city and he uh, in verse 18 and uh, in verse 17 as we read he is disputing in the synagogues he is really uh, he re, uh, doing apologetics there and, and talking to people and uh, knowing their worldviews and uh, really uh, he wanted to speak to them about the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that's the reason he went to he went to the Jews and he went to marketplace and whatever persons he is encountering there he's going and sharing the gospel with him going and sharing the gospel with him and uh, he is not leaving any person there not leaving any person and only because his heart or his spirit is stirred inside he as as he's seeing people perishing there as he's seeing that people are worshiping a God whom they do not know and uh, his heart was hardened. His heart was hardened, and his and his mind was completely occupied only with one thing, that is to preach and take the gospel into their hearts. And uh, today we see so many people around us, so many people around us who are worshiping a false god, worshiping an unknown god, worshiping a god who do not have a personal relationship with them, and a god who who do not really uh, think for the welfare of the people. Yet people. People are worshipping them, yet people are conducting so many rituals and conducting so many and giving so many offerings to the to the idols there. Idols made of hand, made of silver and wood and gold. And uh, is your heart stirring to preach the gospel to such people? Is your heart really burdened? Is your heart really burdened for your family people? Is your heart bur really burdened for the city, city people who are really living and who are really worshipping an unknown God? And uh, that is a responsibility and that is a burden that God has given to Paul to go and preach the gospel there. And that's the same burden you and I need to have today. And, uh, and as we are church, and as we are the church members, as we worship God for so long years, and how far are we taking the torch forward? And most of the time, the torch is with us and the torch is being dimming, dimming, dimming day by day, day by day. And we are really, we are really perplexed and we are really uh, only after after lighting the torch lighting the torch once again once again and once again and uh, and most of the people are not thinking about taking the torch to other side other side of the sea and that we need to do that that is the greatest burden that god has put in the heart of in the heart of paul and what is your heart filled with and what is that burden that god has given you and what is that burden and what is that reason that you're living today in this world and do you know the reason? And do you know the burden that God has given you? And if you are not a person, if you are not a person with vision and mission in your life, and definitely people out there are perishing only because we, we believers, we, we the custodians of the gospel, and uh, we do not have that burden that Paul has, that vision and that mission that Paul has. And, and how beautiful it would be that if we, and we the church, of South Lollywood Baptist Church, every believer in the South Lollywood Baptist Church has that vision of Paul. And, and if your heart and my heart be still like Paul, and definitely our church would never be the same. Our church would never be the same. And our believers would never be the same. Our families would never be the same. And we are in this same situation only because our heart is not stirring. Our heart is not stirring. And our heart is not, not in thirst for the souls that are dying outside. The dying outside. And we want and uh, we are looking for holy pleasures we are looking for so many things in this world but yet we are forgetting that great commission that god has given to you and me and uh, what if this this heart of paul be with each and every one of us today and uh, let us take this heart of paul let our hearts still when our people are perishing let our hearts still still are in our hearts so that when when people and when people are worshiping an unknown god 
looking up to an unknown God and wasting their life, wasting their time. And if that, and if that doesn't stir us, and definitely what can stir us and what can really encourage us and the best motivation that we can take is the perishing people outside and man's thirst for God. Man have never stopped thirsting for God, thirsting for God. These people, they do not know whom they are worshipping, yet they do not give up on worshipping the Lord, worshipping uh, worshiping God whom they do not know. And that should, that should really encourage us and that should really motivate us to go outside and to preach the gospel. And there is so much idolatry in our country. So many idols that have taken place, even in our city also. There are so many idols that are taking place and uh, so many idol worshiping worship is taking place also. And uh, are you really burdened to take the gospel to such people in your life? There might be your friends, there might be your family, there might be your, your colleagues that you're working with, and uh, there might be so many people, e even down the streets also. And uh, it is our responsibility and it should be our burden to preach the gospel and to take the gospel to our outside, outside of our church. And the second thing, and the second, uh, and second motivation that we can take uh, to preach the gospel is the philosophies of this world. Philosophies of this world. And as we live in this modern, modern world, postmodern world, sorry. And as we are living in the postmodern world, and most of the time there is a there is a tendency in the preachers, there is a tendency in the believers that and uh, everybody and gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is not is not unknown to everybody. Everybody knows the gospel. And uh, there is a there is a wide conclusion that we, that people come to that everybody in the city and everybody in this world definitely know the gospel, know the gospel, and that is the excuse that we take. And uh, you need to understand, even though even though uh, even though uh, we are living in a world that is postmodernized, and uh, so much of intellect is there, and so much of books are there, and so many mediums are there. There is social media, and there is even in this uh, even in this age also. The preaching of the gospel has not become void. The preaching of gospel and the ministry of preaching of gospel is definitely the need of the hour, even in this technological age. Also, people have, people may have, people may have uh, uh, YouTube's and all the all these social media, social platforms to know and to read about Bible and to read about God's word. But yet, yet there should be a preacher. There should be a preacher. And how could people be changed if there is no preacher? If there is no preacher. And you and I need to be that preacher who takes the God's word to outside, outside where people are perishing. And when you look into the Acts chapter, uh, Acts chapter uh, 7, where, uh, uh, where uh, Philip comes, comes into contact with the uh, Ethiopian eunuch. And uh, uh, this person have, have uh, the book of Isaiah with him, the scroll of Isaiah with him. And he's reading the scroll of Isaiah. And as he's reading the scroll of Isaiah, and uh, uh, the, the word of the Lord came to Philip and Philip, go to the eunuch and preach the gospel. And uh, uh, Philip might be purpose, why? This person have had the scroll of God and he's, he's, having the, he's having the law, law in him. And he can, he can read that and he can really understand and he can be saved. And this might be the, this might be, uh, the excuse uh, that uh, Stephen have, uh, sorry, Philip have taken. But Philip have not taken that excuse. Lord, this person has a scroll, and why do you need me? And the scroll can help him. And most of the people are, are, are doing the same thing today. There is so much media in this world. Media can save a person. And this is the thought they are thinking. And uh, most of the time we are not responding like Philip and going there and preaching the gospel. And God in this age, there, there are, God also needs so many people like Philip, so many people like Philip, even in this age also if a person who do not or really or take make excuses in their lives philip could have made an excuse of the scroll and we are we, we could also make an excuse of social media and so other media and books and everything we can do but the preaching of the gospel nothing can replace it nothing can replace the preaching of the word of god nothing can replace a preacher in this world Nothing can replace and no social media can do that work and no books can do that, do that work and no newspaper can do that work and no television, no, not, in, not, not anything in this world can replace the preaching of the gospel and you need to go, you need to go and you need to preach and you are the one, should, you are the one who should do that work and if we are not willing to be that one, that one preacher who goes to the world and preach, definitely we are missing so many blessings in our life, so many blessings in our life. And, uh, the, and uh, uh, interestingly, uh, Philip asked, uh, he's asking to the eunuch, and do you understand what you're reading? 
And we know the answer what eunuch have given. Ethiopian eunuch have given. No, I do not understand. I'm reading just, but I am unable to understand what I'm reading. And that's the reason God has sent Philip there. People, uh, uh, praise be to God if uh, if uh, if a person is being uh, if a person is being uh, understand uh, uh, if a person is understanding the word of God as he's listening through the YouTube or, uh, or reading some books and he's, as he's coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and there might be some some percentage some percentage uh, when when people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ some uh, through some other media praise be to God in such situations but that is not but that is not an excuse that you and I can take. You and I can take and you and I need to be like Philip even though even though there is scroll in the hand of eunuch and he is unable to understand even though there are so many even though there are so many media today uh, to make gospel understandable but yet but yet there needs to be a preacher and there needs to be a person who could go and share the gospel to other other side of the sea and definitely that person uh, and uh, you and I need to be that simple person and uh, the philosoph worldly philosophies also are uh, taking are uh, taking the place of God, placing a uh, place of God even today also. And as you as you look into the time of, of Paul, there are Epicureans and there are Stoics, and Epicureans are thinking that. And uh, the only uh, the only purpose of our human life is to avoid pain in our life. And if we if we are living up to your up to your standard or uh, to avoid pain in our life, definitely that is the uh, that is the reason for our for our life. And the Stoics have thought that, and God is not interested in any person. God is not interested in any person. And God simply created this world just as deism. God has simply created this world, and He's left, and He has left the throne, and He has left the world on its own. And this is what our Stoics have thought. And there are so many philosophies even today, not only in the time of Paul, even today also, even today also, there are so many, so many worldly philosophies. And world, no worldly philosophy can really save us all. No worldly philosophy can really guarantee a person a place in heaven. But only preaching of the gospel can. That's the reason. Even though there, there are so many philosophical things in Athens, Paul goes there and preaches the gospel of the Lord, Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And when you look into the, uh, verse 24, he says, in verse 24 he says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is, he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelling not in temples made with hands. And the first thing Paul is reminding them, God is not, God is not a God who just created it. And he's not, he's not sustaining the universe. Yes, he has a left the universe, but he is the sustainer of the universe. And God, and he is speaking into the point of, into the point of stoics. Stoics have thought that God just created and he has left. And they also think that God is a part of creation. And uh, clearly, clearly, and uh, Paul is reminding God is not a part of creation. He is a creator. And he has made the heavens and the earth. And in verse 24 he says, God has made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is a Lord of heaven and earth. He has not left the throne. He is the Lord now, even now, Lord of the heaven and uh, earth, dwell, uh, dwelling not in the temples. And uh, as he goes on to goes on to speak, uh, so many things about God, so many things about God. And God needs such preachers today, such preachers today. And you and I can be that preacher who really shares the word of God. Most of the time, we think that we make so many excuses and think that, and uh, they are living, uh, they have so many intellectual, uh, intellectual ideas in this world, and so many things are there, and that is enough, and that is enough for them. And uh, we might once again be reminded that nothing in this world is enough. Only the gospel of God is enough to save a soul, and that you need to take uh, to the uh, other side. And uh, the final motivation that we need, that we need to take, uh, we need to take. Uh, to preach the gospel is the ignorance of the true God. If the ignorance of the true and the living God, ignorance of the true and the living God. When you understand, uh, verse twenty, uh, verse twenty-three. For I passed by and beheld your devotions. I found an altar with this inscription: "To the unknown God, whom therefore he ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you." There is a lot of ignorance of the one and the true God. There are so many people who think that their one God is not sufficient and there are so many uh, so many uh, isms and there are so many uh, so many uh, things in this world that really take people away from the word of God away from the will of God away from the ways and the gospel of 
the Lord and see with Jesus Christ. And that ignorance should be met by people who are enlightened. Our ignorance, we were once ignorant. We were once ignorant. We thought our ways are good. Our, our things are good. Our worship is good. And uh, our, uh, our everything is good apart from the word of God. But God, out of his grace, has enlightened us. And he has removed our ignorance and he has given the knowledge of the gospel to each and every one of us. And we are filled with the knowledge today. And most of the knowledge is in the heads today and is not coming down into the hearts. And that gap should be filled. That gap should be filled. And our hearts, our hearts may be very shrunken, shrunken with the love for other people. But our heads may be bulged with so much, so much of the knowledge of God. Today people are very interested People are very, are very interested to acquire knowledge of God, to know more about God, and to, uh, to understand God and His ways in this world. And only some are interested to share that knowledge with other people in this world. And that the, the knowledge of God is not our soul. We are not the sole custodians of the knowledge of God. And the knowledge is to be shared to the generations to come. To the, through the families, the knowledge should be shared. Through the, uh, through the churches, through the Sunday schools, the knowledge should be shared. And through the church meetings and anything, anything that we do uh, uh, in regards to sharing of the gospel, the knowledge of God is to be shared to the generations to come. And uh, most of the time, there is selfishness growing in the churches. The selfishness growing in the, in the believers today. And they grow more in the knowledge of God and even in the, in the preachers of the gospel also. There is so much selfishness growing and that is the reason gospel is completely bound up. Gospel is bound up and Satan is not binding the gospel but believers in the Lord Jesus Christ are binding the gospel even to the churches. Bind, the gospel is only confined to the churches today, confined to, the, confined to only believers houses today and, and confined only to a Christian organizations today. And, what, and how good it be and how blessed it would be it would be that the gospel be loosened to go out and to reach so many perishing people in this world. And that is the reason might be that God has brought us to such a situation to think about the things we are doing, think about the words that we are doing today. And if we have, and if we have that, uh, that spirit of self-introspection and let us introspect our lives and let us understand how we are doing and what we are doing for the expansion of the kingdom of God. You might be doing so many things for the expansion of your church, expansion of your family, and to build up your family, to feed your family. So many things you may be doing. But what are you doing for the expansion of the gospel of Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Because God has really left his throne. God has really left all his glory there. And he came down only to save you and me. And, uh, and uh, that God is expecting that you go out, you live, you leave your throne. You leave all the glory that you have, all the things that you have, and go outside. Just empty yourself of everything that you have in your life and go to your brother and share the gospel. And if that, that is not met in our life, definitely uh, we are completely missing, missing so many things in our life. And praise be to God, so many people have heard the gospel that Paul has preached here. And Paul clearly, clearly spoke the word of God today. And Paul clearly made, made them understand, made them understand that Jesus, Jesus and his finished work on the cross is the source and, uh, and he uh, is, the, is the way to heaven. And by listening to, the, uh, listening to that gospel in verse 32 we see, in verse 32, and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, some mocked, and, uh, uh, and others said, we will hear the once again in this matter and uh, in verse 33 so Paul departed from them and verse 34 very important however certain men clave unto him and believed clave unto him and, and believed among them which was uh, Dionysius the uh, Aeropagite and the woman named Damaris and others with them and the other excuse uh, most of the people uh, bring uh, is if I preach the gospel no one is going to hear if I preach the gospel, no one is going to accept the gospel. No one is going to really understand the gospel. I cannot speak. I cannot make them understand. I cannot really share properly. I cannot do this thing. I cannot do that thing. And that is the, that is the greatest uh, hindrance for the gospel to go outside of our, of our realms. And uh, Paul have overcome that thing. 
and Paul really went there and shared the gospel and God has done the work there and it is God's work to change a person it is God's work to really make the person to believe in the gospel and it is not our work our duty is to preach our duty is to preach and when Paul preached Paul is uh, Paul is uh, uh, really he is so uh, he is solely so educated person he has so much so much of education so much of things in his life and yet some people mock him some people mock him and before his preaching also he told and some people said that this fellow is a babbler he do not know anything and he do not know he do not understand the depths of the philosophy that you and I have today and this is what people mocked at him people mocked Paul and they are going to mock us and they are going to mock us and we need to take it to heart that there will be some people some handful of people who will cleave unto the gospel and believe and we see two names there Dionysius and also Damaris have heard the gospel and they did not mock the gospel but they have understood the gospel and they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and their eternity has changed and the destination has changed and the purpose of their lives have changed and if there was not Paul there today they, they might be and so many generations through them might have really really uh, uh, did not uh, really go into the hellfire but praise be to God there is a man like Paul only sent for two people to believe there and there might be so many other people also who also believe but this person Paul was not disheartened he did not come into this eight things just to preach the gospel but he was waiting for his friends in the meantime in the meantime Paul was preaching and in the meantime if we can do such things how would God be pleased with us and if in the meantime if Paul was preaching there God could do so much things and if we have that full time and if we dedicate our lives to the God and go outside and preach the gospel and wherever we are if we share some word to the people how would God bless our work today do not really be discouraged by the results that you get results are with God results are with God there might be one person who is waiting for your word one person in your family who is waiting for your word one person in your in your realm waiting for your word when you open up your mouth and be a blessing to others shall we pray our gracious God most loving Heavenly Father thank you for the blessed opportunity once again to understand the importance of evangelism Lord, help us not to be disheartened by anything in this world. Lord, we understood that nothing in this world can replace the biblical preaching. Lord, nothing in this world can replace. And help us not to replace with social media or some other thing. And help us to carry the gospel to the other side of this world. Lord, please be with us. Help us. Strengthen us. And Lord, as you promised that your presence shall go with us, Lord. Lord, help us to help us to take the promise to each and every one of us. And help us to live by it. And help us to be strengthened by it, Lord. Lord, help us not to give up. The results are with you. And you are the person who is going to change the mind. And help us not to strive to change the mind of the people. Lord, our duty is to preach. And help us to do that. As we submit all of us once again into your mighty care. Lord, thank you for helping us to meditate your word. Thank you for giving us, giving us this blessed time, Lord. Lord, as we commit so many people who are, who are really perishing because there is no word to them, because there is no one to or share the gospel to them, Lord, help us to be that one. Lord, help us to share that one. Lord, help us to really carry out the gospel as we submit all of us, especially the people who are interested to share the gospel into your mighty care. I pray and ask all these things in the precious name of the Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the blessings of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you.